Hello, today is a special day. Good morning, Coastal Ben. If you didn't know, it's Veterans Day. This morning, we have team coverage with Paulo Salazar and Victoria Valderrama at the Field of Honor in Robstown. That's right, Sierra. Good morning and good morning to you at home. Uh, folks are going to be here setting up flags. We're at the first ever Coastal Bend Field of Honor, and those flags will be set up later this morning. It's just one of the events that we've got going on today. Yeah, that's right, Paulo. And we're covering so many stories about our local veterans. Happy Veterans Day. We're going to tell you all that you need to know before heading out the door this Veterans Day. So stay with us for the next hour of Chris Six Sunrise. Yeah, your second hour of sunrise starts right now. Good morning and welcome to Chris Six News Sunrise. We appreciate you starting your day with us. You can hear that train in the background. It's going by. I'm Sierra Pizarro. Here's Juan Acuna for the weather. Meteorologist standing by with what we've got going on today as far as weather. Well, what we have going on this morning is a lot of fog across the area, especially for the inland parts of the region. We had all the wind that came in yesterday and just piled on the uh, moisture and humidity over South Texas. And now that the winds have relaxed, it's resulting in some of that fog. But our six weather bug network is all looking good this morning. But when you look at it on the visibility map, there is quite a bit to go around in parts of Bee County, stretching on into northern parts of San Patricio over towards Refugio and uh, off towards Aransas County as well, three to five miles, but a mile over in Bee Orange Grove, Alice, Hebronville, you're included about a mile or below. So you really just want to use caution. You want to slow down, use the low beam headlights and leave space between your vehicle and the one in front of you just in case you need to stop uh, very suddenly there. So again, just use that caution and uh, get to your destination safely. We're at 66 degrees this morning, 72 off in Port Aransas. Winds are calm across the area and right now a little bit of cloud coverage more up to the north of us. And as we look at that Veterans Day forecast, it'll still be a warm one despite a weak frontal boundary coming in today only a stray shower we top off in the middle 80s a full look at the forecast is coming up but for now sending it out back to Paula all right thank you mr acuna and uh, right now i'm joined with uh, an organizer for this event that we're getting ready to talk about the first ever coastal bend field of honor now this morning military vip in nueces county they're all organizing this event and joining me right now and it's it's all made to honor our veterans but joining us right now is kate ruppert with the military vip and uh good morning kate thank you for getting up early with us here on sunrise thank you for having me now talk to me a little bit we've got we're gonna have a thousand flags out here a thousand flags. it had to be quite a feat to get all of this organized and and started how did this event even get going in the first place it started at a dinner party where uh, someone who worked for an event in Victoria, Colonel Mike Patrash, organized, started doing this 13 years ago. He let us copy it and make it our own. He'll be here today as well to be honored and to speak to us. And so what we do is we take a flag and we have a PVC pipe uh -huh. and it's about eight feet tall and we attach it with zip locks or sorry, what are those things? Zip ties. Zip ties. Thank you so much. Um, and then when the guests come here today, they check in, we put the name of the honoree, captain or colonel, sergeant, whatever. Uh -huh. And then after the actual um, ceremony, they announce it like Colonel Jake Rippert, uh, uh -huh. US Army, World War II, Korea. Yeah. And then they can take the flag and the pole and the bow. The bows are behind you. Um, got a big bag of them right here, right here. I'll grab them. We have lots of bows. Thank yes. you all volunteers for that. And then they can, they will plant them on all of this rebar in the shape of a cross to pay homage to those that went before us. Wow. What a, and that's not a small flag there, folks. So what an awesome sight that's going to be here in just a matter of hours. And all this for a $50 donation, which much of the money is going towards where? It's going to the uh, veteran service organizations in the coastal bend. We're keeping it local. We're taking care of the people that protect us. Now, you talked about the guy who got the event started real quickly. It took him 15 months to put it together. How long did we do it right here? Three months, but we had we had him, so that was very helpful. Yeah, we did it in three months uh, exactly. Wow, wow. Well, we a got lot of people came together for it, and uh, it was it's just been an honor to be a part of it. It's going to be an honor to see all of this come to life here in just a moment. But I had the honor of sitting down with a veteran, local veteran, and it is also a Purple Heart recipient. I got to hear some of his stories about his time in Vietnam, some of his worst days, some of the days that he lost some good friends. Now, he feels responsible for their deaths and 
That's a weight that he's been carrying around for years. Take a listen. They told me that I went back six times and I brought back six guys. Two of them were dead. The date was April 5th, 1969, when Camarillo's unit, Company C, was attacked during a reconnaissance mission in the Aishan Valley in the Republic of Vietnam. His platoon was ambushed and his platoon sergeant was shot. After running out of bullets during return fire, he rushed forward through enemy fire to reach his sergeant and carry him to safety. It's a day Camarillo wouldn't remember until 20 years later, but there's one day he says he'll never forget. In April 10, 1969, I was walking point, and the first bullet hit my rifle and knocked it down, and Tom got killed. He then carried Tom, a fellow soldier, to a chopper to be medevaced out. Hours later, his platoon was hit again. That same afternoon, I walked point again, and William got killed. Fifty years later, Camarillo would learn four others were killed while he was walking point looking out for the enemy. It's a weight he's been carrying for years. I worked two ambushes in five days. I was the only one. I, I, I feel guilty. I blame myself. All these years, Pablo, all these years, me eché la culpa yo because I made it, he made it. Hey, hey. I, I, I was working poor and I got shot. He, he didn't make it, Pablo. But he did make it, and he continues to tell his story and the stories of his brothers. Camarillo fights for veterans statewide. He is currently the Texas State Commander for the Military Order of the Purple Heart. He hopes this Veterans Day people will take a moment and think of those who have sacrificed for our freedoms. I'm an American. I don't believe in white, black, brown. I'm an American. That's who I am. And we want to thank Mr. Camarillo, or Airborne, as his friends call him, for his time and being so candid in that interview. Now, the 82nd Airborne Division is having its Veterans Day ceremony at Ben Garza Gym at 1815 Howard Street starting at 10 a.m. Now the Veterans Band will perform and Corpus Christi Mayor Paul Edgardo and uh, Martin Lagoria, the chairman of the Mayor's Committee on Veteran Affairs, they will speak during that event and it'll be followed by a barbecue that's going to be going on at the VFW Post 2397 on air. So once that event's over, go by, get you a plate of barbecue. Now, since starting our Veterans in Focus series, we've had a number of Coastal Bend residents and folks beyond call into the newsroom, all wanting to help our veterans in need. Now, JJ De La Cerda is the Nueces County Veterans Officer. He wants to connect those who want to help with veterans in need. Now, with no warehouse or storage place, De La Cerda created the Facebook page, The Veteran Connection of the Coastal Bend. Barbara Ginaway wanted to donate her uncle's clothes on the condition they go to veterans, so she used the page. And I know it's going to go to veterans, and like I said, that, that's wonderful for all of us. It kind of gives us a little peace, a little closure. It's great that the community responds in, responds in, in this manner because we've got to take care of our own. And we've saved the best for last. The items on the site, get this, they're all free of charge. Now to find the group, just search the Veteran Connection of the Coastal Bin on Facebook. Or you can go to our website at christv.com slash veterans in focus, where we have provided a link for you there. Well, these days, everything is digital, and that includes finding help with benefits and even job hunting. But that can be tough, especially on our veterans who lack the computer skills. Well, there's one place, and that's Goodwill. That's where they come in to help. The organization offers basic computer and internet classes to veterans all free of charge. Now, you can file military benefits, find a job, even look up resources you may need to give the help that you need. Now, Goodwill received a $100,000 federal grant to help fund these computer courses for the veterans. Now classes typically take about a week to complete. 
Well, it's important for our veterans to connect and keep informed. So each week, a group of local veterans, they get together and it's all called the Corpus Christi Veterans Roundtable. It's diverse. Of the represent they seem like they get pushed from pillar to post. They go here, they send them here, they send them there. And we try to do so they can get what they need right away. Every Tuesday, U.S. Army veteran Dotson Lewis leads the two-hour meeting. The group has a simple mission to inform, to educate, and to assist veterans. Now, Lewis does it so that every local veteran can have the access to the resources that they desperately need. I try to honor Zach by being grateful to those who remember him. So running the round table helps keep him active and he hopes providing that outlet keeps others active as well. The round table meets every Tuesday morning from 9 to 11. Lewis also hosts a radio round table on Saturday mornings from 8 to 10 on 1440 KEYS Keys. And we're also honoring the memory of those who have died in battle. Now, one of those was Zachary Kolda. He served in the Marines as a corporal, and he was killed in Iraq in 2004 at the young age of 23. Now, his legacy lives on at Zachary Kolda Elementary School in Corpus Christi. I try to honor Zach by being grateful to those who remember him. And uh, coming up, Andrew Christensen will tell us more about Zachary Kolda from those who knew him best, his family members and friends, and how the school will be honoring him today. Well, a small group of veterans in Premont have banded together all to grow an organization that will leave a lasting impact on their town. Ricardo Rubio and a few others, they started the nonprofit Premont Veterans Association. Rubio says that the group is dedicated to helping a veteran in any way they can, whether that be through tra transportation, a fundraiser, or just spending quality time with them. We believe that showing them is better than telling them and letting them talk about us is important because they know that we're having a positive impact and image on our community. And tonight on Chris 6 News at 6, around Hammy will tell us more about the impact of the Premont Veterans Association. And you're going to want to stay with us all show long. We'll have more Veterans Day coverage live. We've got team coverage coming to you this morning. Victoria Balderrama, she's going to make a showing again in the Sunrise Show. And it's all from this beautiful field that's going to be transformed with flags, over a thousand of them, and it's all to honor our veterans and those who served. But for now, Sierra, I'm going to send things back to you in the studio as you can start to see the sun starting to come up. Yep, it's 613 AM. Thank you so much, Paula. We can't wait to see those flags. Let's go ahead and get a look at the roadways now for those heading out the door. Juan Acuna. All right, and as we take a look at SPID right now, we are keeping a close eye on things. They were diverting traffic because westbound lanes were closed due to construction, but now it looks to be open. Both lanes are open and uh, flowing smoothly out there, but there's plenty of extra traffic. There's plenty of fog into the inland parts of the region. Anywhere you see that orange color, we have some dense patchy fog about a mile or below. So really use caution out there. As we look at the traffic flow coming into downtown Corpus Christi, that looks good. Traveling over the Harbor Bridge this morning, both lanes are a smooth sailing right now. And as we look towards 37 and the Crosstown Expressway, that looks good all the way towards NPID and pushing out towards a SPID. Everything is looking good. No major accidents to report folks, but there's plenty of fog. Get to your destination safely this morning. So latest look at traffic, Victoria, send it back out to you this morning. Thanks, Juan, and the Coastal Bend State Veterans Cemetery is the resting place for our service members. I'm Victoria Valderrama, and coming up, learn from military families what the cemetery means to them. And we want you to send us your veterans' pictures so we can honor them today. You can send them to our website, caristv.com backslash veterans in focus. Stay with us. I'm Ramon Cortez. I joined the United States Marine Corps in 1969. I was drafted. I didn't have a choice, but it was a great trip. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Cortez. You know, this is Veterans Day and we salute all of our service members who are still with us and those who have passed, you know, a lot of families are expected to go to the Veterans Cemetery to honor their loved ones who served in our military. Sunrise reporter Victoria Badarama is live in Robstown to introduce us to two local widows who are going to do just that today. Good morning. Good morning and happy Veterans Day everyone. While there will be no ceremony at the Veterans Cemetery today, it is open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And yesterday I stopped by and I spoke to two widows who were visiting their husband's graves. So I'm coming today to put flowers in and a flag. There are 4,536 veterans and dependents buried at the Veterans Cemetery. One of those veterans is Emilda Clark's husband, Billy Joe Clark. He served four years in the Navy and died in 2016. She says she knows where to go when she misses him. My husband's buried through this row right here, in the, by the middle. With Clark is her friend Darlene Gonzalez, who also lost her husband, Manny Gonzalez III. He was in civil service at the Corpus Christi Army Depot for 38 years. Christmas, veterans, any holiday, I come in, I, actually I come and visit him every month. I miss him a lot. <laughs> and no matter the day, they say they both feel comfortable visiting the veterans cemetery. It's so peaceful and it's, it's beautiful and I mean, they just keep up with this place like really nice. I really, in, I really enjoy coming out here. JJ de la Cerda, the veteran service officer, says to be buried at the cemetery, proper documentation needs to be provided, like military discharge papers, a marriage license for the spouse's burial as well, and a copy of the death certificate or a burial transit permit. And that's something Imelda Clark says her husband took care of before dying. I'm going to be buried here with him also, so at least I know that I'm going to be in a clean, nice place. The cemetery is located on I-37 and said that tells me that you can stop by, leave flowers or flags whenever you'd like today. Reporting live from the Field of Honor, Victoria Valderrama, Chris 6 Sunrise. Sierra, back to you. It's nice to see that our past service members are still being recognized and honored, especially today. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some of our top stories now. A new federal court ruling could impact states that ban government entities, including public schools, from enacting mask mandates. The judge ruled the Texas mask ban violates the rights of students with disabilities. Texas Attorney General says he'll pursue all avenues to appeal this ruling. The newest weekly unemployment report comes out at 830 this morning in about two hours. The numbers are going to be the latest measuring stick for how the economy is recovering. Last week, unemployment claims fell to 267,000. Now, as the historic COP26 climate summit winds down in Scotland, the world is welcoming a new deal between the U.S. and China. Under the agreement, both countries commit to working together on reducing emissions and meeting goals outlined in the Paris Accords. Today's summit is going to focus on taking action in places people live. It's time now for a full check of our forecast. How is it looking where we live? Good morning. Good morning, Sierra. Look at that just behind me, and that'll tell you everything you kind of need to know for today. I'm going to get out of the picture so you can enjoy that. With the sparkling city by the sea, Corpus Christi Bay looking calm out there. We have sunrise that's occurring, mainly clear skies over South Texas this morning. Just absolutely gorgeous out there. 66 degrees officially out at the Corpus Christi International Airport, though we are reporting some fog out there. And, of course, the winds are calm, so that's helping with the fog development. So visibility across the region is still holding on to about a mile over in B County. Parts of Live Oak County out around George West. Three rivers are included out towards Lake Corpus Christi, Orange Grove, down towards Alfred, Sandia, uh, Alice and Hebronville, San Diego, Freer, Benavides. You folks are all seeing that dense fog this morning, so really use caution and uh, even down to about two miles over off into the uh, Kingsville area. So as we take a look, if you're going to be driving in some of this uh, dense fog, of course, many of us are, especially for the inland folks, you really want to use a uh, reduced speed out there use the low beam headlights and again the reason for that is if you've used the high beam it's really going to reflect uh, reflect off of the uh, little tiny water droplets with the fog and you won't be able to see a whole lot so low beams best but of course we have sunrise so again that's occurring and you want to leave space between your vehicle and the one in front of you just in case you need to uh, break suddenly you don't have that uh, you have that space as a buffer between you so just use caution all right the hour by hour forecast for today on this veterans day continues to show plenty of clear skies across the region. We will have a few clouds that will move into the region. 
courtesy of a weak frontal boundary that will be coming into the area. But notice by noontime, it's still going to be 82 degrees as we start to pick up more of a north northwesterly wind only at eight miles an hour. Now later on this afternoon, these could go around 10 to 20 as a little bit of some of the dry air starts to come in, but it's not going to be a whole lot for us. This is not going to be a frontal boundary that comes in and blasts through the entire region. As you can see by the temperatures there, we'll still manage the uh, middle 80s for many locations, about 84 here, 86 off in Robstown, Alice, Freer, 87 in Kingsville and into those middle to lower 80s out near the coastline. So future tracker painting the possibility of just a couple of showers as the front eases into the region, but it doesn't last a long time. Notice by three o'clock, most of it's gone either off in the Gulf of Mexico, could still see a stray shower off near the Baffin Bay region. And then as we go into tomorrow morning, a cooler start to the day, we'll have 50s across the region and still managing the lower 80s with plenty of sunshine for Friday. The marine forecast will be a bay slightly choppy. The seas two to five feet. The rip current risk is low. High tide will occur out at Bob Hall Pier and Port Aransas Jetty later on this evening at the Packery Channel this morning at 647. We do have high counts of the grass in the air for today. Ragweed and mold are on the low side. Right now that frontal boundary up to the north of us right now and again high pressure to the north will continue to filter on down. So late Friday on into Saturday that's when we'll see another blow of uh, some cooler drier air coming into the region. But in the meantime 80s for highs and that reinforcing front comes in late Friday on into Saturday. We're in the 50s for morning lows on Saturday and Sunday. 70s for highs for the weekend looking pretty nice and then rising humidity and warmer next week. Paulo out to you in Robstown. OK, Juan, I think I spoke too soon earlier about it being kind of cool out here. It's starting to warm up nicely already. Well, every year, more than 250,000 service members transition from active duty to civilian life. And as you can imagine, that can be difficult at times. They can have times of loneliness and just isolation. Well, this morning, Janet Shamlin takes a look at a service member who's trying to change that one mile at a time. Along a Tennessee highway, a runner carrying the American flag is an attention getter. What type of reaction do you get? We get a lot of honks. I've had people <laughs> wave at me. But for Army veteran Christine Barreras, what looks like a solo pursuit has never felt more collaborative. What was happening before you joined this group? I started to fall into a deeper depression and isolation. A feeling many have expressed after leaving the military, and the reason more than 1,100 veterans have joined the support group Team Red, White, and Blue for a Stars and Stripes carrying relay that started September 11th in New York and is making its way across nine states, finishing 2,500 miles later in Atlanta on Veterans Day. Team Red, White, and Blue's mission really is to help foster that sense of community that we felt when we were on active duty and that we often leave behind when we transition to the civilian world. Through downpours, often with families in tow. Beautiful. The track has taken the flag from rural forests to Pennsylvania farm fields, across a high school stadium, and past the Jefferson Memorial. This day's relay ends in Nashville. But it's just the start, Pereira says, of her new chapter. To get back into that connection, that camaraderie, and get back to being driven and have purpose again. A new mission for veterans seeking motivation and connection, this time as warriors of the road. Yeah! Janet Shamley in CBS News, Nashville. I'm Joe St. George. President Biden wants more of America's electricity to come from places like this. But what do wind farms do to a community? We take you to wind country next. Chris 6 News Sunrise continues. A question for you. How should our country generate the energy and electricity needed to heat our homes? Well, for years now, fossil fuels like coal and natural gas are the main source. But President Biden's economic spending plans, which could get a vote in the House next week, calls for more wind turbines. Our Joe St. George headed to rural Texas to find out how this new plan might benefit us. It's windy. It feels like a fall day in Texas. Alito Castillo is taking us for a walk, and while there are plenty of windy cities around the country, we have an awesome wind turbine. <laughs> it's doubtful wind is as much a part of life in your town as it is here 
in Taft, Texas. As you can see from my hair blowing around, like, you know, there's a lot of wind. Castillo's family has lived here for generations, but these wind turbines have only been around 10 years or so. In total, there are around 200 of them, which averages out to be about one turbine for every 15 people who live in this small town. Each one's around 400 feet. That's taller than the Statue of Liberty. We are taking something that is provided to us naturally and using it for energy. 2020 produced a record amount of new wind power installations in our country. Even in the middle of a pandemic, it accounted for 42% of all new sources of energy last year. But the extent in which wind production grows even more. So this climate crisis is an enormous opportunity. Is very much dependent on whether President Biden gets his spending package through Congress. That bill is separate from the infrastructure bill, which is already passed. Currently, it contains $235 billion dollars worth of tax incentives for renewable energy meant to encourage companies to make more investments in projects like this. It's an industry that supports not only the landowner. Sergio Contreras is with Rio Grande Valley Partnership. He says wind turbine construction doesn't just create jobs in places where there are few. It creates new forms of tax revenue. The county government where these were built has received over 40 million from the operator since 2006. It's also transforming education. So the community colleges have implemented brand new programs to provide this workforce. A two year program will produce a worker that's going to be paid about $55,000. As for Castillo, the tank farms over there, she admits the town isn't entirely relying on wind. After all, Texas is still drilling plenty of oil, but she says if her town can contribute just a little more to the environment, your town can too. If Texas can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> In Taft, Texas, I'm Joe St. George. You know, a little goes a long way. Good message there. Time now for a look at the roadways. Juan Acuna standing by with the latest. That's right. We are keeping an eye on things for you and our uh, uh, one shoreline sky cam looking off to the west, bouncing up and down just a little bit. There's a gentle breeze out there, but it's not as bad as that camera is bouncing up and down, though. A little bit of extra traffic over on I-37, still holding on to plenty of fog for the inland areas. Really use caution. A mile over in Beeville, Alice, Kingsville, Bishop, Heavenville, out near Benavides as well, Riolitos, Concepcion, and uh, into parts of uh, 281 as well. So just use caution in those regions. Morning drive times from the island of downtown, still about 30 minutes. Portland to downtown, a 10-minute drive, and on I-37, from Cal Allen into downtown Corpus Christi. It's about a 15 minute drive there. Just use caution, folks. It's the latest to get traffic. Sierra, back to you. Thank you. We've still got more to come right here on Sunrise, but we want to thank our service members because you know today is Veterans Day. If you or someone you know is a veteran, please send us your picture so we can honor them today. You can send photos to our website, christv.com backslash veterans in focus. Stay with us. Good morning and welcome back to Chris Six Sunrise. It's 636 AM. We want to tell you now about an investigation underway in Woodsboro Boro, over an apparent tasing incident involving a black teenager. Woodsboro police and the Texas Rangers say it happened during the Halloween weekend. And now the victim is taking legal action. Our Cordero McMurray brings us up to speed on this case. He was at the news conference and has more about the allegations. NAACP President Jeremy Lane Coleman says they consider this incident a hate crime. Matt Manning is the attorney for the victim. He claims three teens dressed up as members of the KKK and tased his client. Manning says he does not know the race of those dressed up, but says those responsible are believed to be on the Woodsboro High School football team. Here's what we do know. There are as many as six victims involved, all minors. Manning says one person was tased and the other five may have been terrorized or chased with the taser. He says that they will be watching every step of the case. If we are going to talk that we're a society that cares about each other, then when we hurt each other, particularly in a way that's specifically intended to hurt someone, we have to call it foul and we have to run it down the same way they did my client. We are a mixed nation. We're a mixed country, a mixed state, uh, Woodsboro, Refugio County. Um, it's a mixed city. However, that does not mean that incidents like this can't go unchecked. Woodsboro ISD issued a statement involving the case. The school district says they are aware of the allegations but cannot take any action since the incident took place off campus. However, Woodsboro police, along with help from the Texas Rangers, are still investigating the incident. If you have any information that can help, you're asked to call Woodsboro police at 361-543-4514. Reporting in studio, I'm Cordero McMurray, Chris, 6 Sunrise.
All right, thank you Cordero. We'll keep you updated on this situation. It's time now for a full check of the forecast. Juan Acuna, good morning. Nice view behind yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely right. Good morning, Sierra, and uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, again, happy Veterans Day to everyone. A very important day to remember all of our service members who have uh, fought for this country and uh, fight for our freedoms. As uh, we look behind me again, a very nice shot over in Rockport this morning. 67 degrees, calm conditions. That water is calm as well. Looking fantastic. Those will become slightly choppy later on today. Boaters and Mariners take note of that. And as we move on over towards Cal Allen out at Northwest Boulevard, that's 624 coming in from Bluntser and a little bit of extra traffic out there. 66 degrees, calm conditions too. It's that fog, folks. And so that's all we've been talking about this morning because it is dense and it is uh, area wide, especially for the inland regions. Not so much over uh, here in Corpus Christi or out at the Naval Air Station, but just up the road in Rockport. It's been hovering around one to two miles, about three miles over in Beeville, Orange Grove. Now zero visibility over in Atlas and stretching on towards Heavenville, Falfurias, Premont, you're included. Kingsville is down to two miles as well. So just give yourself a little bit of some extra time, folks. It's going to take some time uh, for some of this fog to wear off. And as we head towards eight o'clock, a lot of that will continue to burn off. And then by 10, everything will begin to uh, improve rapidly out there. Of course, as sunrise occurs, as sunrise is occurring already right now. Again, 66 out at the uh, Corpus Christi International Airport, 72 off in Port Aransas and lower 60s from Alice, Kingsville over towards Falfuria, 62 in Orange Grove and a couple of 66s from Freer, San Diego and about 63 to 64 over around Bevo, George West and Three Rivers as well. Right now the Doppler radar is quiet for us here. We have a couple of showers just offshore, but just to the north of us from Gonzales over towards Schulenburg over near Sealy, just south of Brenham, pushing over towards Conroe, just north of Houston. This Houston, this is going to be heading in your direction. Uh, this is a weak frontal boundary that's just going to ease into South Texas as the day progresses for today. There's not a whole lot of cold air or drier associated with this front, but it is going to ease in, give us a northerly flow, and it's going to take for some time for the cool air associated with that to filter on in, which is not going to happen until we head towards the weekend. But lots of sunshine for today, light winds over the next two days, rainfall chances stay slim to none. Notice most of the rainfall off in East Texas will get missed out with the exception of just a couple of stray showers. So the first front arrives for today, again, very weak in nature, and then the second one will arrive late Friday on into Saturday. That one has a little bit more of a punch to it. That'll cool us off for the weekend and also give us some sunshine. But for today, we'll hold on to north northeasterly winds for most of the day, 8 to 16 miles an hour as we top off in the middle 80s. And again, mainly clear skies, a few clouds across the area. There is a frontal boundary just to the north of us right now as cold air sinks in. But the upper level support for this is way up to the north of us. So we're on the tail end of this activity. So 80s today and tomorrow. That reinforcing front comes in late Friday on into Saturday. That takes us into the low 50s on Saturday and Sunday morning. 70s for highs looking fantastic and then rising humidity going into next week with highs back into the middle to lower 80s. Sierra. Love those flags. Thank you, Juan. You know, there's no so shortage of places celebrating our veterans today and Sunrise anchor Paulo Salazar is live in Robstown with more about what's happening right here in the coastal bend and around the country. The sun is up. Good morning, Paulo. Well, good morning, Sierra, and good morning to you at home. Well, there's a lot of folks getting into the spirit of things, and Veterans Memorial High School is one of those. They're having a big event called Salute to Our Veterans, and it's all happening this morning. We take great pride as a, as a campus in honoring uh, our military, uh, both uh, current, uh, past, and present. Probably your thing died. Here, take mine. Wait. Now, the uh, celebration begins at 9.15 a.m. with refreshments. The program will begin at 7.15. All veterans are invited. And we're also told that by students and staff that it's something you won't want to miss. Um, so we have our, a lot of our athletes, our, our, all of our fine arts groups, our, our choir, our orchestra, our band, um, our football team, our Starline dance team. We even have our art students that are putting together some pieces for kind of a small art exhibit um, at the entrance of the auditorium. We're going to be singing like all the hymns for the um, branches of the military, Army, Coast Guard, Navy, Marine Corps. I can't wait to, you know, actually just have all these veterans appreciate the fact that there's a choir, you know, acknowledging their hard work, you know, and um, I think it's an honor to be able to sing these songs for them. Now, Veterans Memorial opened in 2015. The name was chosen after Corpus Christi ISD asked the public for their input. 
Well, this year, the Texas Education Agency gave it the Purple Star designation because of its collaboration with Naval Air Station Base Corpus Christi and its outreach for military connected families. Now, Veterans Memorial is located at 3750 Cimarron Boulevard. And if you know someone that is a veteran, well, we've got a task for you. We want you to send us their veteran picks so we can honor them both on air and online. Thank you for joining us. We're going to take a quick break. We'll have more sunrise when we come right back. Stay with us. Good morning, guys. Coming up on today, an in-depth look at the many issues that surround soaring prices and inflation, from the impact on your daily routine to your holiday shopping. Plus, could there actually be a silver lining here? Uh, Steph Rule will have everything we need to know. Also ahead on this Veterans Day, a remarkable program helping service members overcome their struggles with mental health by connecting them with a special group of rescue dogs. Also on today's Holiday Handbook, we are revealing Consumer Reports' top products of the year, perfect to give or receive. So we'll have that and more, guys, when we see you in just a bit, right here on Today. Chris 6 News Sunrise continues. Good morning. Thank you for keeping it right here on Chris 6 Sunrise. We're going to take a look at some of our top stories now. A new federal court ruling could impact states that ban government entities, including public schools, from enacting mask mandates. The judge ruled the Texas mask ban violates the rights of students with disabilities. Well, Texas Attorney General says he'll pursue all avenues to appeal the ruling. A crew member who worked on the Rust movie set is suing over the deadly shooting of a cinematographer. The head of lighting filed suit against Alec Baldwin and nearly two dozen others involved in the film for severe emotional distress. Lawyers for former President Donald Trump are scrambling for a legal victory in the fight over documents related to January 6th. Last night, a judge denied an emergency request to stop the National Archives from giving Congress the documents starting tomorrow. Team Trump is taking steps to appeal again, this time to an appellate court. Now, you know, there's a need for workers and it isn't just affecting businesses across the country, even Elves and the guy in the big red suit himself is having a hard time finding Santa's helpers this year. So Hire Santa, it's a company that helps people find and hire Santa's helpers around the world for parties, mall appearances, and more. Before the pandemic, Hire Santa said demand was already tight, but after losing some Santas to COVID-19, some retiring and some concerned about the pandemic, it's led to a pinch on Santa's this holiday season. Santa is such an important part of that family tradition that they that many people have come to to love and cherish over the years. And so I think that's really pushing this uh, this demand that we're seeing uh, in 2021. All right, we need the elves, we need the Santas. Higher Santa says demand is up 121% compared to last year and 2019. Now, if you want to visit from one of Santa's helpers, the company says plan on having some flexibility with dates or consider a virtual visit. And if you think you have what it takes to double as Kris Kringle, there may be a special job waiting in the North Pole or a town near you. All right, let's go ahead and get a check at the roadways. Is Santa out there yet? Probably not. Huh? I don't see him, but <laughs> there's plenty of traffic out there. We're taking a live look over at SPID. Eastbound and westbound lanes are flowing smoothly. Westbound lanes were closed earlier this morning, and there was a lot of traffic over on the access roads, but that has since cleared, as you see there, looking pretty good. Still plenty of fog into the inland parts of the region, folks. Anywhere you see that uh, yellow or that orange color, I should say, uh, we have dense fog below a mile. But 37 and 44 coming into downtown Corpus Christi looks good. 181 over the Harbor Bridge is fantastic. A couple of the intersections are beginning to get busy out there and off towards Ocean Drive headed to Airline and out near Airline and SPID some extra traffic and things are beginning to improve out on the island and out towards the Naval Air Station this morning. So latest look at traffic. Let's talk about birthdays folks and we want to hear about them now sponsored by La Playa by the Bay and get those birthdays in because two lucky winners each month will win $50 gift certificates. Click on that birthday club tab on ChrisTV.com. Submit your photo and information. Here are today's birthdays so join me in wishing them a very happy birthday. My name is Kevin Mendoza. Uh, I joined the Air Force in 2013. 
and I served for a number of years. Uh, it was a good experience. It gave me the opportunity to continue my education and eventually uh, become a teacher and uh, teach, teach uh, social studies and history uh, to our upcoming generations of youth. Thank you so much, Kevin Mendoza, and all of our service veterans for what you have given us. Today is for you because it's Veterans Day. And today, our Sunrise anchor Paulo Salazar is out in Robstown at the Coastal Bend Field of Honor with more on what's happening. You're swatting some flies or maybe mosquitoes. What's going on? <laughs> Uh, the mosquito, mosquitoes, gnats, uh, who knows? There's, there's some flying insects around me, that's for sure. Uh, today, it's all about the veterans, and Sierra, you mentioned it. I'm out here live at the uh, Field of Honor. It's the very first Coastal Bend Field of Honor that's being held, and it was all organized by Mike Shaw. Um, his family, their mission is to give back to veterans, and uh, Mr. Shaw was a veteran himself, so he's very much involved in orchestrating this. For $50, okay, folks were able to donate that $50. They get a flag that's going to be set up here at the Field of Honor, and they're going to mention their service member, their loved one, and it's all to give them the honor that they deserve. And folks can come out here and see the flags that will be going on through December 2nd. And that was only a $50 uh, donation that got folks to be able to be a part of this event. And there's going to be tons of events going on, Sierra, all across the area, all to honor our service members, uh, men and women. of a few of the here are a list of a few of the events going on here. The USS Lexington ceremony is having its event at 2 p.m. The San Patricio County's Veterans Day ceremony begins at 10 a.m. at the flagpole at the county courthouse in Sinton and a Veterans Day parade in Kingsville kicks off in downtown at 5 p.m. And you know, companies get this. They're offering freebies and discounts for veterans today. House. Well, they're giving military veterans and active personnel a free blooming onion and soda today with proof of service. Now, Olive Garden, they told the USA Today that it's providing veterans and active duty military a free entree from a select menu today, but it's only for dine-in only. Yum, and Buffalo Wild Wings is giving service members a free order of 10 boneless wings and fries for dine-in or takeout. You got to show proof of service. Bubba's 33 is going to have a veterans free lunch from 11 to 4 today. And Texas Roadhouse says it's going to be giving out meal vouchers in the parking lot. That's today again with proof of service. Okay, well, now that you got me hungry, I'm going to need my vehicle to take me to these places. Well, Jiffy Lube, they're inviting active duty and retired military members all to come on in for this Veterans Day. You can visit the location on Airline. You're going to get half off an oil change today. And if you can't make it out, they do 25% off discounts every day of the week for veterans and active military. And we've got more on these events and all the promotions that are going on for Veterans Day on our website at ChrisTV.com. Thank you so much, Paula. Let's go ahead and get a full check of the forecast. It's looking beautiful out. The sun is finally rising. It's about to be 7 a.m. Good morning, Juan. That's right, and we're still dealing with plenty of fog out there this morning. Visibility still at zero over in Alice, Hebronville, about a mile over in Orange Grove, Kingsville, Falfurias as well. As we take a look at current conditions, we're at 63 here in Corpus Christi, 65 off in Vivo. Port Aransas is at 72. We will have more sun, to, uh, more sunshine today, 84 degrees across the area. There's a weak frontal boundary that will come into the region. So as we take a look at that seven day forecast, the front coming in today is very weak in nature. We'll still be into the 80s tomorrow, but a cool morning. Then a reinforcing front comes in late Friday on into Saturday. This weekend is looking absolutely fantastic. And of course, it's Veterans Day. We've had a special edition of Sunrise this morning for our veterans. So we're, the whole team, we want to thank everyone. Yeah, All thank you. Veterans. And we thank everybody else for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful start to your Veterans Day and honor the service member in your life. Yeah, and stay with us for the for Chris 6 News at noon. Have a great day, Coastal Ben.
Make today count, everyone. We'll see you back here next time. Adios.